there are 76 million of us just here in the US. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their lives. Join me. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Welcome to Boomerology Revealed. I'm Shahar Boyayan, your host. So what do you do if you find yourself single again after 50? How do you find the perfect partner? These are some of the topics we are going to cover today, specifically about online dating. Yes, and we also have some health tips for you and simple ways to market to boomers. Let's watch. One thing you may not know about me is that I have been single for a very, very long time. I actually got divorced when my daughter was only four years old. And you know, I would like to have a partner, but the thing is I'm not very good at that. I'm no social butterfly. I really don't care too much about going to parties. And I live in Utah, which means that most of them, they get married at 18 and they marry for eternity. So it doesn't leave a lot of room for a single gal like me. So my option, people say, is to go online and find the right, the, the Mr. Right for me. I actually have a friend that did that twice, but so far has not worked in my case. So I decided to ask for some advice. I have here with me Dave Mack. You have been married three times, right? Yes. Yes. And the last time you found your wife online. I did. So tell me, tell me the process. Have you tried that before? No, I, you know, it never dawned on me. I figured after two wives, I was done. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, you know, and you're in your mid fifties and I still had some small children. Oh. My youngest actually uh, needed some help doing a project on the computer. So I helped him. And then when we were done, he said, dad, let's go see where you can meet people. And I said, oh. you're a little bit young for that son. And, and he said, no, I mean for you. So we randomly uh -huh. picked a dating website. And uh, we looked at some pictures, and to him, he was saying, she looks nice, she looks mean. She looks nice, really? she looks nice. Oh. It wasn't about pretty, uh -huh. it was all about nice or mean. Right. I took note of the ones that he thought looked like they were nice people, and also looked attractive, mm -hmm. and, and I saved those pages on that program. And then you told him, go play outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were chatting the other day, and we were both mentioning that when you see yourself single after 50, it gets a little weird because, I, I mean, for, for example, me, I don't go to dancing places anymore. Uh, I don't have a specific group that I meet on a regular basis, like, you know, a specific church or something like that. Yeah, you're not that PTA mom anymore. Yeah. You're not, yeah, and if you don't go to church, no. And if, if you don't belong to any organizations, you know, volunteer, whatever. It's really difficult to find someone. I think ultimately the best thing to do is to go to belong to some sort of organization, okay? Um, but if, you know, you're not that type of person to do that or if you don't want to go to bars, we don't want to go to bars, not at our age. <laughs> For you, online dating works, right? Like, online dating works. I met my late husband online. Uh-huh. And we, you know, we chatted a little bit and we met and we were inseparable after that. You know, I did Match.com I and I met someone there and I met, I did uh, eHarmony and I met someone there. How long, How long ago? I guess I started a little over two and a half, about two and a half years ago I started. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm telling you, there's a lot of undesirable men out there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. There's a lot of them out there, and you, in the beginning, you don't realize that they're shooting you a line. Uh -huh. All right, so his his profile is written in perfect English. The grammar is perfect. Spelling is perfect, okay? That's kind of a flag for you? That's kind of a flag. He had sent me a message. In the message was something like, hi, you're so beautiful. I want to know you more better. Oh. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I figured if I wanted to come back, I could I could find these right. few that we took the time to find. Unbeknownst to me, uh, when you do that, it sends them a message says mm -hmm. that says you know somebody has is interested or something. Yeah. Yeah, has uh -huh. has earmarked your page. About 24 hours later, I'm getting messages from these people that I earmarked. And, and one of them was my now wife. Really? It was that simple? It was that simple. Boy, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> it, was, it was a long process from there. <laughs> and we dated for a year before okay. we got married, but it was that quick to bump into each other. So, so she got noticed that you had bookmarked her page, contacted Send you, and note. then you start emailing each other? Yep. Yeah. And well, we started communing, uh, communicating at the, at the dating website. Okay. My messages started getting so long, they were truncating my messages, you know, so we graduated mm -hmm. to emails and text messaging and then phone calls. Okay. How long between this and the first phone call? Between, I need to the, know fir <laughs> between the first date and the first... Uh, oh, the, from the very the beginning emails, to the first yeah. one. It was probably about a month. Okay. Yeah. And then to the first date? Two months okay. into it. I heard some place that really people... Um, they don't go for a date per se. They just, you know, meet someplace to talk a little bit or chat over no, video. No, it was it was a real date. It was a real date. We we went to out to dinner and then to uh, a rock show. <laughs> he went to a rock show. Uh, <laughs> Can I ask how old you are or you were I'm, at that time? I'm 61. At okay. the time, I was 56. So they <laughs> went to a rock show. <laughs> <laughs> they were beautiful rocks. Okay. <laughs> I will take the first step. Okay. In the beginning, I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but after a while, I said, well, you know, I'm paying for the site and I'm not getting anywhere here. Maybe I need to take the first step. Maybe that guy out there is kind of timid. I, I believe that there is a, a behavior change anyway, right? Because I, when I was young, you would expect the man to be proactive and take all the lead all the time. But right. that, that's really against the grain today. Right? Women take yeah. the lead most of the time. We want equality, don't we? Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. There's no yeah. reason why we can't take the lead. Well, you know, I didn't go very far at all with online dating. So <laughs> you, you put your picture out there. I, I know they, they send you some what they think are matches, right? But what's your process in there? So you put your profile, your picture. I, I read that if you put your picture beside a dog, you have more chances than just oh. you. <laughs> you know what? Men love dogs. So that probably, that does make sense. Yeah. That does make sense. I put in only pictures that show me from like the, the chest up because <laughs> yeah. I'm a fuller figured woman. But you know what? I make sure that they know that in the profile. So you do, you have to be upfront and honest. Um, probably pictures, like you said, with with your dog or maybe even your, uh, you know, something that represents you in your life, you know, what it is that you like to do, you know. But as far as the, the profile is concerned, I think being totally honest and what I have found is that I'll put in my profile, if you don't live within 20 miles of where I live, don't bother me. Oh, really? If you are 15 years younger than I or more, don't bother me. If you're not looking for a serious relationship, don't bother me. We've been married for five years now. And since that time, I've discovered that it's, it's extremely common now. I mean, it that's is. the place to me. Who wants to go bar hopping? You never know what you're going to get there. And, and you still have to be careful online mm -hmm. because people will say things that are not true, I right. find. Um, and pictures that are not true. Yeah, they yeah. might be from 10 or 20 years ago. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's it's better and you can open up and talk about each other and your likes and your dislikes and family and you can get acquainted a lot better than sitting at a bar over a couple of drinks. Now, the the process in your case your son was with you and you kind of but that thing about looking at pictures and just a description did it feel comfortable at all for you because for me it's it's a challenge. It's like, should uh, I buy carrots? Or should I buy <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like shopping, I guess, come to think of it. I didn't think of it that way at the time. <laughs> no, I was fine with it. I, but then again, I thought it was perfectly innocent. I didn't think I'd be getting notes from people because I had bookmarked their page. That's interesting. <laughs> I have to try again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, li to listen to a few more opinions on the topic. But I know, really for real, that today it is the way to meet people. And yeah, it, yeah, it's effective. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a huge percentage. More more people meet that meet online now than not. At this point, what I've decided is that I'd rather meet that person sooner 
than later. Okay. Because if I've spent weeks or maybe even months of my time talking to him via these messages, and then we finally meet, and there's no attraction whatsoever, yeah. we've both wasted our time. I don't know about you, Shahar, but I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk with them. Make sure you have a good feeling about them, you know. And, and of course, always meet with them in a public place, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure you have someone at home or some a friend or whatever. All right, text me at 1230 <laughs> and, you know, make sure I'm okay and that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, because we have to, to be aware that tons you of... Have to be aware. I think the least you get out of this is a good exercise, right? It does take some work. Yeah. You're going to go out. Oh, you're yeah. It's going to take, you're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right now, um, you know, so, you know, I, I, you know, go out for dinner with this one and whatever. I meet up with different people, but in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I'm just letting go and letting God, God will bring me mm -hmm. that person that I'm supposed to be with. So in the meantime, I'm having a good time. And I feel blessed and honored that here I am almost 63 years old. And there are still men out there who are attracted to me, regardless of the fact that I'm overweight and old and I've got arthritis. And, you know. So, so that doesn't matter, right? So that People doesn't matter. Interested in yeah, your personality. Cause, yeah, because I have to remember that these guys that are I'm, I'm looking for, in my age group, they're old, they're overweight, they've got arthritis too, <laughs> you know? Look for the companionship and love is going to come down the road. Welcome. I'm Gary Loper. I'm a Twitter expert, life and business coach. Really work, love working with people to be able to help with their mindsets and be able to create a better relationship with yourself. And when you get a better relationship with yourself, your relationships with your partners, your families, your friends, your customers, community are so much better. And then you can be able to work with relationships uh, with your health and your finances and a lot of other things. I want to share with you a little bit about my stories with online dating. I've actually have two stories I want to be able to share with you. The first one, I went back to college to get my marketing degree and in one of my business classes and this was back in like 1991 um, I did a business class and this is when singles ads were online dating were in magazines and in newspapers and people would write their little ad and then they would respond by mail and then I would get a bag full of mail and going through so you know we got a lot of responses and we really gauged those on the image. Some people had torn pieces of paper, half paper, the pictures that they sent were not of them or with them and somebody else's. So it was really not creating the positive image and going through there. Flash forwarding now onto current times about actually coming up next week. Uh, my wife and I are going to be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the day that we met. And we met through an online dating service. I had had my profile up for a number of years, probably five years before this. What I started doing, and this is part of my life coaching practice, is I started learning about the law of attraction. And that how we focus on what we want, what we get. Because if you ask a lot of people, in relationships, what do you want? They always say, well, I don't want the smoking, drinking jerks who leave the seat up and don't, don't call in the morning. And that's exactly what they, they wind up meeting. So when you know that by putting your thoughts out there on what you don't want, you're actually going to attract that. That's your, that's your highest vibration. So my singles ad evolved over time because I had a lot of practice dates and why I learned a little bit more about all the different people and really helped define what I what it is that I truly wanted. And over that time, my profile contained a list of about 46 qualities that I that were essential for me to be able to have in relationship. Compassion, caring, nurturing, teacher, student, listening, honesty, 
none of them were physical characteristics. But what I did for the physical thing, you know, I really focused on that they were interested in yoga and walking on the beach and a lot of things that were very interesting for me that I wanted to be able to have. And over time, and I want to be able to emphasize this, is until you know for sure what you want in your relationship, you need to be able to open yourself up to having those practice dates so you can be able to learn what you don't want to have. And so it was, it was, it was just a very interesting experience. And then, so I had that ad out for quite a while, and we met Carol. You know, we were automatic, you know, there was an instant attraction. We met a couple days later, and then we, it, there was just a spark. And then I realized that this was something too good to be true or too good to miss. So we, you know, I, we really jumped into it. You know, online dating, I, I fully support because it allows you to be able to shop and be able to look and if you're looking at things, the profiles, you can be able to look into somebody's, what they're writing, what they're saying, how they're projecting themselves in their pictures. And it really gives you an opportunity to be able to do a lot of the shopping and trim off a lot of things so you, you're not going to have too many other experiences, you know, bad experiences. Some of the, the tips that I would suggest in your profile is honesty. You have to be absolutely authentic and honest. Some of the biggest surprises that I had when I when I met some of the, the other previous dates was that the person that showed up was not the same picture in the photo. <laughs> now, you know, I can understand, you know, we, we all get, we get, we get fluffy sometimes and we, you know, we, we may not, and we may think that's a deterrent to be able to meet somebody. But when one of the first items on my list was honesty and they showed up and they were 40, 50, 60 pounds over my high end expectation, it's like, okay, well, this isn't honest, you know, and we had conversations be honest, really look, make a list of the things that you want to be able to have in your life. What's important to you? What do you enjoy doing? My biggest suggestion is while you're creating your profile is honesty, authentic, current picture, and a list of the things that you want to do and you want the qualities of that partner. And then the more specific that you are with that, the more likely that you're going to be able to attract that relationship into your life. And I really believe that relationships are our lessons in life. We get attracted because of the sunshine and balloons and all the, the PEA, which is that hormone that doesn't let you see the garbage not taken out or the underwear on the floor. You don't, you don't see that. There's a hormone that's produced within the first two years of a relationship. But the test comes when that PEA wears off and you're there and now you're, you're really authentic and you're really open. And relationships are there to be able to help both of us heal and to be able to heal our stuff and make it comfortable for somebody to unpack their baggage. Everybody's going to have baggage. And to expect somebody to have no baggage is, is insane because you've got it, I've got it, and we're all going to keep going through it. And realizing that the, the, if you focus on the needs of the other person and help them feel loved, speaking their love languages, and when you do that, they're going to be more apt to be able to speak your love language and, be able to, and then, then your relationship is going to be able to blossom. If you are diabetic like me, or maybe you have arthritis, or even if you're a pregnant mother, you really want to pay attention to the product I'm going to show you. It's a lot more than a product, it's a system. It's the Footmate system. One piece of the system is this brush. You know, you can use this brush in your shower or in your bathtub. It has soft bristles here for the tender places in your feet and stiffer bristles right here that takes away all the dry skin and rough areas. But that's not only what makes the system. We also have the rejuvenating gel. The rejuvenating gel is composed of tea tree oil or maliluca 
aloe vera and conditioning. And as we all know, tea tree oil and aloe vera are fantastic for healing skin and takes, they take away also the odor. So even if you have some sports fan inside your home, you might want to try the systems with them. Now, like I said, you can use in the shower or in your bath. The, the system has suction cups that you can put to any smooth surface and use it there, either on the walls of your bed or on the floor. If you don't have a smooth surface, you just need to put one foot on one side while you brush the other, so you're always safe. Foot mate system is really great, especially if you have diabetes, arthritis, you're a pregnant mother ha having a hard time reaching your feet, and of course, athletes that need to take that odor out. You can find Footmate at footmate.com. I'm Kara Clapp and I'm here to talk about health issues affecting people over the age of 50. And I'm 51, so I should know. <laughs> I'm also a nurse practitioner, that's how I really know. I often get asked uh, from people, so what do I do to stay healthy? And um, quite honestly, the answer to that is pretty simple. Um, I noticed that when I turned 50, I started getting a lot of mailings, and I wasn't quite prepared for that because I don't feel older, but obviously to some demographic marketer I am, and um, I often get asked questions about screenings. We now know that blood pressure changes are the first sign of that inflammation that occurs in a blood vessel that also is a precursor for diabetes. So if you just do a simple blood pressure check, if it's 120 over 80 or lower, you're good to go. Don't need to worry about it. As you get older, 50, 55, 60, you want to have those A1Cs, which is a uh, snapshot of every three months, the blood sugar that's carried on the red blood cell. Uh, you can have that done annually or every other year. Once your blood pressure reaches 135 or over 85, it becomes a different matter. Uh, that's signaling some chronic inflammation in the blood vessel, and chances are you have some insulin uh, um, insensitivity and so then you should start the diabetes screening every year and the sooner we pre, uh, can treat prediabetes uh, the longer we can shove off that actual diabetes uh, diagnosis and quality of life issues eye exams every three years uh, they're just screening for the health of the retina looking for signs of glaucoma uh, visual acuity uh, some color blindness that does change though uh, with some unique uh, medical factors if you are um, black, you need frequent screenings if you have a lot of UV exposure. So if you tend to be outside without sunglasses or skiing and have a lot of light reflecting, um, that does promote um, cataracts early. So you want to have uh, screenings done a little bit earlier. And then if you are diabetic, eye health is really important to be screened every year. And then if you have an illness that requires uh, corticosteroid use, such as rheumatoid arthritis, uh, you'll need a more frequent screening for uh, changes in the eye. Blood pressure screening, um, if it's 120 over 80, you're good to go. If it's lower, hey, keep up the good work. However, once you start to approach that 135 over 85, then you want to keep an eye on it, do some diet and lifestyle changes, not necessarily need medication, but just keep an eye on it. And then once it reaches 140 over 90, then you've gone into the territory of needing some medication help with it. Hormone uh, replacement therapy. I'll give you the standard for traditional medicine, which is we don't supplement after a woman's gone through uh, natural menopause, um, surgical menopause if she's younger, but most women have gone through the change of life by age 50, 55. However, from the alternative medicine perspective, varying opinions there. Um, I won't make any recommendations on camera because it's all based on medical history and symptoms. But um, let's just say that the Women's Health Study didn't have a very accurate picture to give us seven to 10 years ago when a lot of women came off of their home or in replacement. Uh, there are some great uh, places that you can use it. Um, and uh, bioidentical is a good place to start, um, and you can use synthetic hormones with careful supervision. Um, I myself prefer to use the bioidentical ones um, for my patients. Lipid screenings, uh, blood fats, they're not necessary after age 65, so if you can get to 65 without any cholesterol issues, you're going to be one of those octanarians that make it to age 100 quite healthy. However, Starting at age 35, if you're a man, yes, younger than 50, but you're going to need a screening every um, year. 
especially if there's an early heart attack in men in your family prior to the age of 45. If you're female, early heart attack in a female is before age 55. Females should start screening their cholesterol around age 40, and by the time they reach age 50, they should be doing it every year. Um, again, that is a, an illness caused by inflammation, so there's a ton of diet and lifestyle changes you can make. I'm not a particular fan of statins. This year, the cardiac um, societies have uh, tweaked the formula to estimate 10-year cardiac risk. I personally don't agree with them because even if you take a person with no medical uh, history risk factors, they will have a risk factor that puts them, um, uh, encourage statin use. And I personally don't agree with statin use unless uh, you're talking about somebody who's at serious risk for a heart attack. The rest of us, we can do some alternative medicine things and get through those uh, 50 to 65 years uh, quite beautifully and healthy. We're almost done. Oral uh, cancer. Uh, there's really no good screening for it now. Um, it's part of your dental exam. It's a visual exam. They're looking for unusual uh, lesions in the mouth, pain, and then um, everyone may have heard Michael Douglas actually had throat cancer. That was from an HPV infection. Those are really hard to track down, so I would encourage men who have certain uh, sexual practices that they at least have a swab done if they think they've um, been exposed to HPV and have that uh, checked out to make sure later on it doesn't uh, encourage um, throat cancer. However, I'm not aware of Michael Douglas being a smoker or not. He may have been, but smoking with an HPV infection most definitely is high risk for throat cancers in males. Bone density, everybody loves the DEXA scan. It's one of the easiest screenings you can do. We recommend one at 50 for baseline. Um, if you have a, a fracture in your medical history, you need to have the screenings done every three years. Uh, luckily, bone density doesn't change a great deal as long as you're weight bearing, meaning you're walking, you're not bed fast. And um, if you're getting adequate amounts of vitamin D, on board and that would be D3. It's a little more bioactive. Um, that'll keep you in good stead. Uh, we used to tell people to supplement with calcium and magnesium and honestly those recommendations um, it's really individualized. I personally don't tell people to go out and take calcium uh, but the vitamin D is important. Um, as you can see my body shape I'm overweight and we now know that obesity locks up a great deal of vitamin D. I've been a religious sunscreen wear since I was 16 and when I hit 50 the first thing I checked was my vitamin D level and it was 16. It was in the basement. Optimal vitamin D levels are 70 nanograms so uh, you can supplement safely with 5,000 units. Um, in the winter time when the sun is hiding from us I will go as high as 10,000 units. We don't know that there's any upper limit to vitamin D or toxicity level so that is one vitamin that you can be safe in and, and comfortable in supplementing at those higher levels. Skin cancer. We're in Utah, but I understand this might be broadcast elsewhere. So if you're in a sunny spot, um, just do your skin surveillance once a year. Skin cancers will often grow where there has been no sun exposure, so make sure you look at all of your body. And um, the rule of thumb, uh, what we're looking for is melanoma. It's a very deadly skin cancer. Everyone else can survive the basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas, but melanoma is the killer. So you're just looking for something that's really unusual. And there's a little moniker, uh, A, B, C, D, and E. A stands for asymmetry, so you're looking for a mole that doesn't have a you know a consistent shape to it. B is border. If the border is kind of angry looking um, and irregular, uh, that could be precancerous. C stands for color. Uh, most healthy moles, you know, benign moles, have a consistent color. But if you have a, a mole that has two or more colors in it, please have a healthcare professional check it out. They might want to biopsy it. D stands for diameter. So if you have a mole that's bigger than an, an eraser or the tip of your pinky, you want to have somebody look at that. And then E stands for elevation. Um, most people, um, I'll do it in millimeters too, and then um, English um, measurement. Uh, three millimeters or more in elevation, you want to have somebody look at it. Or if it's more than a sixteenth of an inch in height, you want to have someone look at it. And those are my recommendations for staying healthy. We now know that most of our chronic illnesses are related to inflammation and chronic inflammation. And there's very easy ways to deal with that. Um, the illnesses that I would be referencing would be uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, 
uh, some forms of early stage cancers because the cell growth is kind of abnormal. We know that our immune system, 70% of that function is in the gut, so we start with gut health. If you don't take a probiotic, please consider taking a broad spectrum one uh, that will help seal the gut and prevent uh, germs that you may have been exposed to when you were a younger person uh, from leaking out into the gut. And we know that there are some super germs out there, bacteria that release endotoxins. They're uh, quite incompatible with good health. And so you wanna keep those endotoxins in the gut so they can be flushed out. So a person with diabetes or prediabetes, we know that they typically have an overgrowth of some of the uh, gut flora and they are lacking uh, the rhamnosus um, variety of uh, the good flora. So if you are a diabetic, pre-diabetic, and you have symptoms of irritable bowel, frequent stools, uh, loose stools, you want to look for a probiotic that actually has the um, lactobacillus rhamnosus in it. Uh, that also has been shown in research to show that some people can lose five pounds when they're um, looking after their health. We all make less CoQ enzyme 10 after the age of 40 and that enzyme is important because it is the enzyme that all of our cells in our body use to create energy. So if you're wondering why you're a little draggy, uh, some fatigue, just don't have the stamina you used to have, it's probably because you're low in CoQ10 and you can supplement two tablets a day. Uh, most of the formulas out there are gonna have ubiquinone in it. Uh, that is a depleted formula, uh, which if you take it in higher doses can uh, work properly. The more expensive versions of CoQ10 are ubiquinol, uh, that is an active form, more biologically available. You have to use less of that. Um, so it just depends on what your budget can afford. And my favorite is fish oil, high quality. You want to make sure that it had, doesn't have the contaminants. I'm not a fan of Lovaza. They patented the process for purifying the oil. Um, and I don't agree that you should have to pay $170 for your fish oil. The other thing you can do is what I did because I'm not so crazy about the, the fish herbs with uh, taking the fish oil. I just eat fish every day. I'm, I'm a fish eater. Every now and then I have to really give a rant about companies that treat boomers as invisible people. They really don't care about them. But today it's the opposite. I want to give kudos to Rite Aid for thinking of a simple and effective way to market to boomers. Just make our shopping experience a lot easier. I went there the other day to get some vitamins and I noticed that they have in most of the shelves magnifying glasses. You can pick your magnifying glass and just look at the small print in the packaging of medicine and, and, and vitamins and other items there. You know, marketing to boomers doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. Look at the example of Rite Aid, the very simple solution that respects the way we like to buy. Yes, yeah, some of us, like myself, we wear glasses just when we we are reading so it's most of the time inside my bag if I go shopping and I have to keep picking it up every time I want to see an item I'll probably shop less because that's an annoying thing that I have to do well by adding magnifying glasses around the store they solved that problem they respected the way we like to buy and they show that they care about us boomers so kudos right a I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.